So we farm in uh, in Dyer, Nevada. It's a little stretched out valley in the middle of nowhere in the, in the high desert of Nevada, on the Nevada-California border. And roughly 4,000 acres. We primarily grow alfalfa, but we've grown corn, we've grown grain crops, mostly you know, to put up for baled hay. Um, we're messing around with some specialty crops, teff being one of them. Uh, we just grew some buckwheat for a green manure crop here recently. Uh, so we're always looking for new crops to grow that fit, fit our niche, but primarily alfalfa is our thing. So when you water a leaf around here, whether it's the alfalfa plant in the field or my wife's house plants, you know, they get a white scale on them. Well, that leaf is how that, that plant, that's its factory. That's how it does its business. Yeah. And so we're plugging it up with, with spritting it over the top. And so with, with the bubblers in, in canopy, we're not plugging up those leaves. And so we've seen more leaves, bigger leaves. Um, it's just, it's not causing that fouling of the, of the plant's energy factory. Yeah, it needs it in the rut, not in the leaves. We've got 50 pivots in various sizes and shapes. Um, and they all need water, take water, and apply the water to our crops. And so uh, that application and the efficiency of that application is what, what's very, very important to our operation. Uh, I've been here in this valley most all my life, uh, 41 years to be exact. I met the Dowers when they moved into the valley and worked for them, and I've worked for them for almost 30 years, I think, a long time. And things have changed a lot in that 30 years. Triple D Ranch, and, and then my own personal stuff is Hillside Hay Company. We kind of put it all together and, and go. And uh, it's been very successful, as Rod says, and we just keep refining what we do. Uh, in the wintertime, we have mountain water, so we wanted to uh, have a chance to use lots of water to flood out gophers and get some good penetration and try to leach our soils. And John got onto the uh, uh, drag hose and I said we were using the drag lines or drag socks. You know, I'd read a lot about it, what they did in Arizona and Texas, but still really wasn't clear. And then I honestly feel that the Lord brought that, the, the article that I saw about the bubbler to us because I, you know, I, I said that, you know, God, there's got to be a better way to do this, you know, when you're going to sh show me the way. And I don't think it was two months later, there was an article in a Farm Journal magazine, I believe, or, or Top Producer, or one of those type magazines that had a picture of the, the LDM with the bubbler pad and, and the shroud. And uh, well, as soon as I saw it in the magazine, I was like, that's it. That's the thing. And so then there was a, a trade show that, it, that was coming up in, down in California, and, and uh, we made contact with the senator folks down there and inquired about them, and we got sent to, uh, to Edwin Smith in, from Texas because he had all the experience with them, and he sent us a care package and said, here, try all these things, but here's what I think you're going to like. And so we got them. We had one machine that was set up on 30-inch spacing already, and so we put the uh, we put all this care package together, and you know, so we could identify and look at all the things that were going on there, and uh, and we immediately picked out the uh, the LDN with the with the corn plate and the shroud. And we immediately picked that one out, so that's the one we want, and it wasn't five minutes. So now we kind of like this one corn plate, so we we had a five tower machine. And so we so let's put it on the end of the fifth tower and the and the uh, third tower, and we'll just try it. And then, you know, boy, it started going in the ground better. So boy, there's something to it. And then uh, we when we bale our hay, we always uh, weigh weigh the hay. So those towers, we we zeroed out our baler, and then we started seeing we're gaining a little bit of crop and. The, and then the, the the first year we could see a little a little uh, more uh, growth to it, and we just kind of uh, went through that for a whole whole year, started making sense. And then we started the next year. We said so we gotta we gotta try some more, and and 
and then we had another pivot that we uh, put it on in the spring and went through the second year in in the, out of our several pivots of hay, it was one of the top producers. But after that, we we said, man, we got to get get this. This is costing us money not getting them on. So we started putting, you know, baling hay, and we went in our three or four day window, we started putting them on between cuttings and, and getting a few on. And this year, when we got the soil samples back, we flushed out a bunch of sodium. Uh, we've gone from like a two point six down to a one point six. Um, Pretty substantial. Uh, it was the first time that we've ever been able to move salts. But the, the soil guy, he always tells us, you got to move, you got to flush that out. And we try and try and try and we couldn't. We put soil amendments on sulfur and gyp and, and other products like that to, to help bust that sodium up and we just it wouldn't, wasn't doing anything for us. But now that we have the ability to, to push water down to it and flush it out of the roots and where we can move those salts, I'm excited about what we're going to be able to do to these fields as we as we continue to push the water into them. Generally, we're I'd say eight to sixteen inches off the ground with the machine loaded. Obviously, uh, with the with the pivot, it'll sink a little bit. And so when we start out, we may be closer. You know, if a machine's unloaded, dry, it might be twenty four inches, twenty to twenty four inches, and then as you load it up. Uh, it, it sinks and also some of it depends on terrain. Uh, sprinkler spacing that we've been using on the inside two spans we run with 10 foot spacing and run IWOB still and then on the fifth on the sixth and seventh in the overhang for the most part we run a 40 inch. Um, if the machine is capable of it, it we may run 30 inch. On the, on the newer machines that we have they come standard 40 and so they become, you know, it's a 40 inch spacing from towers three all the way to the end. And then we start seeing the difference in, in the hay growth. So there was, there was a lot of pluses. And then we're getting, then top it off, we're getting a better yield. Very seldom do we ever get more hay second cutting than, than first. And this year we, we uh, put on one particular field, we put the bubblers on right after first cutting. In the second cutting in, in 30 days, we had 40 more bales on one pivot. So then we geared up and we, we've done 80% of our 50 pivots in the last two years and can't, you know, as fast as the time will allow to, to do it because it's such benefit. I mean, there's just one benefit after the other. One of my main motivations was, was the wind loss. You come into the valley here in an afternoon or an early morning and you'd watch that drift. And when the wind blew, you know, you'd, you'd walk, and it's even worse. And knowing that water is a precious commodity and that we're short of it, and, and, our, and our groundwater basin here is depleting, like most in any heavily irrigated area uh, are doing, it, was, it became a concern. And, and so um, when we started using these and, and saw what they would do to cut that out, that was a big motivation for me, because it's all about efficiency. We found out real quick that, that we got more water in the ground and, and that we could actually cut back on the amount of water we were using, which even fueled the fire even more to, to get things changed over quicker because uh, we, we think we can cut uh, pumping expense, save water, uh, at the same time we're growing more crop. We didn't have the evaporation loss. Right. And then, then the other benefit we, we found with those with those bubblers a foot off the ground, we can run colder because we're we're pretty warm in the daytime and real cold at night. And so, so a lot of times we need to catch that moisture up because we don't get five inches a year. So, you know, in the early spring, and then we found that we didn't have a frost problem. And we started running that hay on, on four or five inch growth in the spring. It wasn't hurting. The frost wasn't building up like and all the water was going to the ground. And, uh, you know, that was, seeing that, I mean, it was an accident, or it was a necessity that it was on, but it was like, wow, that, these things really, really have a wide range of uh, working range. And you could immediately step across the track into the bubbler site and maybe 10 feet, and the ground is soft and squishy and no water stand. In my 30, 40 years of, of farming, this, this is the most exciting thing that, that 
we've seen happen. This is is dramatic. Pick which one of your uh, of the benefits you want to hang your hat on. Any one of them is worth doing this for. But we're getting we haven't found the downside yet. Is how close am I getting to that being as efficient as I can be with the alfalfa crop? And and then one field, the one that Rod talked about last year that we had the best results on, I know for a fact that over water, it, the soil type that it is, we pushed a lot of water through the root zone. And, you know, so yeah. that is a concern. We're having to learn how to re-irrigate. It's, it's just educating ourselves to be better farmers. Our water in this valley, and, and I would venture to say that most waters in the, in the West, for sure, are not good water. You know, they're high in the, calcium bicarbonate and other other total dissolved solids and we've had some places we had to build a reservoir on the end of the uh, field to catch the runoff right and 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 that really changes changes that uh, even in the heavy soils something about that put off the ground and and the bubble in action or whatever it is makes it Huge difference. And then I, I think the other thing we've seen uh, is in the on those hilly, you know, where you got those little knolls with a traditional sprinkler um, that would tend to run off and run down, and so you, those knolls would never never have adequate water. And with the bubbler, because it's going in, you know, we're seeing that those knolls, those spots, are getting smaller and smaller, and, and we're able to actually grow a crop on them just like we would expect to grow anywhere else in the field. So. That's been a huge benefit. The question of the uh, of the no-till, we've questioned whether we needed our ripper anymore. Um, you know, because traditionally we've used a ripper that's you know 30 inch shank where we go down and bust up that those hard layers and uh, and right now I still think that we do, but but there could come a time here in the future where we don't. And the reason I say we may not is because I don't know that we ever pushed a root down three, four feet on an alfalfa crop, even though everybody said the alfalfa is a deep rooted plant, because we've never really made the wetted area, the reservoir for that thing to work at, at a deep level, we've never been able to push down and break things up. And so as we transition into this with our newer seedings, we may find that here, you know, four, five, six years yeah. when we come back and rotate that we don't need that, yeah, we don't have a problem. The next couple of years are going to be exciting. Now we've got new seedings that we're starting fresh and we can maybe train the roots to go deeper that we couldn't get the water in the ground before. So it's going to build our reservoirs up. If you want to find something that's going to change what you're doing on your farm, I'll challenge anybody to just try a few of these sprinklers. The bubbler yeah. sprinklers, I'll challenge anybody. Yeah, we've had, had some neighbors that try them, and, you know, I don't want to try a little bit, and every one of them is, they don't, they don't take them off. They're adding more. Yeah. We, we've seen people that, we told the one neighbor, he had brand new pivots. The pivots had run two months, and he says, I got to do what you're doing. He pulled them off and put the bubblers on, and, and uh, even though they were brand new, because there's that much difference. Yeah, that's a, that, it's, it's the only sprinkler to have, period. And I think you can do it in any crop, not just alfalfa.